think there's a, a, a large group of stocks, things like airlines, retailers, we talk about this all the time. They seem to be having these red light, green light days. Um, and, and then there's, you know, the large market capitalization names that seem to be unfazed. I think what's interesting now, though, is that it's not just FANG stocks. There are, there's a wider group of stocks that seem to want to go up almost no matter what's happening with that resurgence story. And I think that that's what most traders and, and most active market participants are focused on. So you take a look at a name like Spotify. This stock is at an all-time high. It's up 19% over the last two days, which is an incredible move. It's not a tiny market cap. PayPal, new record high. Stock looks incredible. Square looks great, too, technically. Um, these comp they, they, There is so much online commerce and activity happening right now that they're actually saying there's a shortage of coins in the economy. That's how little physical dollars are, are changing hands. And then you've got this whole segment of the market involved in payments. It, it's, not even, it's not even taking a breath. It seems to trade higher every day. So I'm looking at Slack clawing its way back up. Zoom is back to rallying. So it really feels like there's two different stock markets. Um, and, and just overall, you know, we're, we're somewhere between uh, down 4% to down 10% in the S&P. I know a lot of people think this is a really abnormal moment. Um, but going back to 1950, we took a look. What percentage of the time does the S&P spend not at a high but off less than 10%? And it's 56% of the time. So more than half of the time – over the last half century or more, stocks have been kind of in this no man's land where we're not making new highs, but we don't appear, uh, you know, to be in, in, inside of a correction. And I think that's a good piece of context for people to keep in mind. Weiss, I mean, really, it's a battle, okay? And, and you have as an investor to make a decision on which you think is going to win. Is it going to be the reopen trade? Or is it going to be the reality trade of the virus that is still spreading in big areas? I look at what's happening today. Josh mentioned some of the stocks that are up. Adobe hitting a new high today. Apple's higher, pushing on another new high. Microsoft pushing on a high. Amazon pushing on a high. You can call that defensive, uh, or you can call it the trade that got you here in the first place, continuing to work in the environment in which reality sets in on where we truly are. It is a debate. It's a tug of war. But here's how I see it playing out. We've seen recent talk of V-shaped recovery. I don't see that. What I see is low-hanging fruit being picked off as the lockdowns came off and that people went out. They haven't felt fresh air for a long time. So they went out. They populated the restaurants as they opened. We saw traffic on the airlines pick up. But there's where it's going to stop. And what we've got now, look, I'm just throwing out a number. Maybe it's a 0.8 correlation between the spike in cases in the 22 states that's expanding and an administration that is falsely claiming that it's under control. There is no resurgence, which emboldens others to go out and congregate. So I think you'll see a greater spike. Again, I'll refer to Scott Gottlieb this morning, Dr. Gottlieb, who's worried. who said we're on the precipice of this becoming pretty bad. So to me, you've got to go where there is dependable growth, where companies can thrive despite the economy, despite people lock, being locked up, and actually do even better. So I continue to believe that it's technology, it's names you mentioned, as well as a lot that are under you know, that are saying under wraps, the ones that I've been talking about, the 5G stocks can you continue to do well. And I would take the money that I made in the trades, in the airlines, in the others, and put it into those and put some into cash. Because this market's in a trading range. It's not going to be resolved anytime soon. Right. This, this range, Megan, uh, is because of the, the great debate this tug of war that's going on. I'm glad Steve Weiss mentioned Dr. Scott Gottlieb, who told Squawk this morning, and I was going to mention it next anyway, that these outbreaks that we're seeing are on the verge of getting out of control. The market's not stupid, right? The market can push through all of the noise that, that you're, you're getting from various corners about the virus to push through to the truth of what it sees from whether it's models or clear facts on the ground of where the virus is still spreading and what impact that could ultimately have on things like consumer spending and behavior. Yeah, absolutely. The virus is still the central risk in our view. And as you look back um, to when we were going through this the first time with the first wave in, in February, March, April, you have to ask yourself, we do know more now. Um, so we expect that the market will and should remain focused on the spread of the virus. 
uh, hospitalizations, mortality rate, things uh, of that nature. Um, but the key question now is what is the policy response? We do know a lot more about the virus. And so I don't think, I think we can, we can uh, it's hard to, to project what policymakers will do, but it is hard for me personally to see the broad scale of shutdowns that we saw in March and April. So if the response is more targeted, more localized, um, then you get to a point where you could see some of this rally at least being justified. Um, but the market's been focused on the inflection point, rightly so. That's what happens when you're in a severe downturn. You look for the data to get better or less bad. But at some point, we're going to have to refocus on how long it will take to get back to normal, that, that level. Um, as I think about what we're seeing from real-time data, uh, real-time consumer spending data is down still anywhere from 10 to 15 percent from pre-COVID levels. Some of the, the more impacted areas have actually been the high-income spenders, though, and that's important because that means that we need to get more comfort with the virus and going out um, because those, those high-income spenders, the ones who are spending on things like restaurant, leisure, travel, I don't see that coming back anytime real soon. Yeah.